Hello everybody and welcome to this conversation with Richard and Jim. I am Alice and I am the social media administrator here at ICS. If you didn't know, ICS has a social media presence. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter account and an Instagram account which you can follow to keep up to date with everything that's going on with our chaplaincies, just some general updates and some encouragements. Um, I'm really passionate about social media and I'm really passionate about using it for a positive purpose to um, just spread the word of ICS and to encourage people. So that's really what I want to use it for and to hopefully use that to bring in some more supporters for ICS. So I'm just going to kick off this conversation now and we're starting with um, the positives. So Richard, what would you say were your highlights from 2019? Thank you, Alice. It's great to have you on the team. Jemima was our first social media administrator. We now have Alice serving in this role. It's an important part of what we do. As I look back on 2019, there's three things I want to mention to you as highlights. Firstly, I went down to Sydney, Australia, and joined the Bush Church Aid Society in their 100 year celebrations. We founded that work, we were instrumental in the early years of sending chaplains and now to go and visit and celebrate 100 years and see how innovative, how creative, how resourceful they are was a, a pleasure and a joy. They have a great strap line, never too far, never too few, and that has driven them to reach some of the hardest to reach communities in the whole of Australia. Secondly, I want, I want to say something about the joy of seeing our chaplaincies become beacons for outreach. We've been talking for many years about how strong, well-resourced chaplaincies will have an effect on their communities. And now I look at Lyon or I look at Paris, Veve or Barcelona, and you see chaplaincies which have got a, a real sense of their presence and how they reach out. And I believe the Great Commission is fulfilled by witnessing, worshipping communities reaching out. And the third point from 2019 would be the ICS conference, because part of our resourcing is to gather the chaplains and give them an opportunity to be together, to grow, to share the concerns and joys of ministry. Last year, we were in Belgium, in 2019, we were in Belgium with Richard Briggs as our Bible teacher, and it became an important point of what we do. And over the years that we've continued to do this conference, I realise how valuable it is to those who enjoy coming along. Great, thank you for that, Richard. So, same question now to you, Jim. What would you say were your highlights of the year? Well, um, for the seasonal mission, in 2019 one of the highlights for me was one of our new things we heard about the the old thing with australia growing over the century and a half but our seasonal work in corfu was only in it, its second year and i uh, had the opportunity to go out for a few days at the end of june and see firsthand how things were going meet some of our wonderful partners that we've made out there um, the guy who looks after the apartment and really treated our chaplains brilliantly. Um, some of the cafe owners who are helping our chaplains to chat with people. And the Greek evangelical priest, uh, Miltiades, who's a great supporter, a great friend, and he's done fantastically well to help our support, our chaplains out there. So that was a real highlight for me to actually see it in the summer in action. Then a second thing was our oldest chaplaincy. Um, we had an anniversary ourselves in the seasonal mission in that last year it was the 175th anniversary of the start of seasonal mission, which began in Interlaken in 1844 and we're still there. So we were able to have a celebration for that and uh, a couple of the chaplains worked really hard um, and I had a chance to visit earlier in the season to help organise all of that and uh, so that was great. And the, the third thing that was a, a real highlight was really one of our long-standing chaplains who you might hear a little bit more about later who was chaplain for 
Wengen over Easter. It was a new venture for us in Wengen, actually continuing the season after the end of the skiing so that we could have some work for the residents over Easter. And Roger out there did some, had some amazing ideas and really worked well. Uh, what I thought was going to be just to help one or two people. He had a great crowd of people there to celebrate Easter in the sunshine in Wengen. And so that was a real highlight seeing what you did there. Okay, that's great. So we've obviously heard about the positives. So, but obviously the year hasn't always been easy. So what would you say were the biggest challenges that we faced over the past year? Richard, you first. I think for me, and I know we're all tired of hearing it, but I think Brexit has created uncertainty. It's made things uncertain for chaplaincies and in recruitment. And so people have found that to be a disturbing influence. And so people have come to me and said, what's going to happen with Brexit? I mean, I don't know. But it's been, um, everyone started to try and work out how will we function in this new world. Add to that other places where we serve, in, in Chile, in Brazil, in Algiers, in Libya, there's been huge political uncertainty and it's affected the chaplaincies. So there's been these geopolitical things that have created challenges for us. Also, finance has been a challenge for both us as ICS, but also our chaplaincies. And you find yourself looking two ways. You want to resource the chaplaincies, but at the same time, you're aware of our own needs as well. And both these things then have an impact on recruitment. And I find myself echoing, as I've probably said over and over, the prayer of Jesus, Lord of the harvest, send the workers. It's a challenge to find the, the sort of chaplains, the sort of clergy who can serve in these places and really flourish and enjoy it and be a delight as they serve there. And Jim, how about you? What would you say the biggest challenges have been in resort mission over the past year? Well, <clears throat> the biggest challenge during the summer particularly was chaplains going ill. And uh, we had a really major problem with our first chaplain in Corfu, or he had a major problem in that he caught some really bad virus which affected him, um, affected his movement, and he had to be pretty much emergency repatriation back to the UK while he was still fit enough to travel. It was a serious degenerative um, problem, which had it not been called early, could have had really long lasting effects. Um, so we're, we're grateful that he's made a, apparently a full recovery and will be serving again, hopefully this coming summer. But uh, he had to come back from Corfu and the knock on that was that he was also due to be serving in Zermatt for three weeks, not long afterwards. And uh, for the first time in my time, we actually had to close the church for three weeks during the middle of the season because we just could not find anybody at short notice. And illness also affected our chaplains in Interlaken. Um, so we had a few problems there, which was one of the reasons why our 175 celebrations ended up a little bit more low key than perhaps we'd hoped for because um, of illness affecting there. But others st stepped up to the mark and we've got a wonderful team of chaplains and they really did do what they could to, to help us and make things go through. The second sadness really was that towards the end of the year we heard the news from our partners in Cavallino, a large campsite in Italy near Venice um, which has recently gone under new management and the new managers suddenly decided that they were going to stop having English and German chaplains coming to serve their campers uh, and so we heard in November that after 30 or so years of working alongside them we suddenly weren't wanted anymore and uh, we've had a really faithful team serving in Cavallino. Some of some of them have served every year for over 20, 25 years out there and were really geared up and looking forward to it and had to give them that disappointing news just as they were being told they were going. I then had to come back and say, sorry, you're not. Um, so that was very sad. And uh, so I think they've been the main challenges. Okay, so we've heard a little bit about 2019, but Richard, where are we at? at the minute 
<laughs> I mean, how do you even speak about 2020 without talking about coronavirus and the, the huge impact it's had on mission agencies? Um, almost all, well, I think all the mission agencies, bar a very few, have stopped sending people. They've all had huge issues about how do you operate when you are global people? And that's where we find ourselves. For us, it's meant we had to cancel resort mission. And Jim and I, we wrestled with this. We hoped, we hoped, we hoped. And then in the end, we had to say, it's not going to happen. And that was really a difficult decision. I can't imagine the last time that's happened for many, many years. So at the moment, we find ourselves preparing for the winter season, hoping that's going to go ahead, doing all we can to be ready and during the summer there's been some improvements done but we haven't been able to do the resort mission that we love to do. Talking about our permanent chaplains, our mission partners, there's been, there's been a delight to observe how they've dealt with this. Very quickly our chaplains adapted, now partly because they're used to using Zoom and all these sorts of things anyhow, but they were innovative, they were resilient, they were resourceful. And you started to see some great ministry going on in the midst of the pandemic, such that churches were growing in attendance uh, that's on a line, online rather than in person. Uh, ben, back in Leon, mentioned Leon again, he has a shed in his back garden, and that became the shed quarters, where on a Sunday morning he was running three consecutive Zoom meetings, one for the service, one for the young people, one for the prayer ministry. Brilliant, brilliant ways of working. What it meant for us is we had to adapt to how we serve, we can no longer travel, and we started to look at running workshops to resource the chaplains, loads of coaching, loads of prayer, and actually just being there when they're saying, how do you do this? What do we do at this point? As far as our recruitment, it stopped almost everything. Certainly in Brazil and Chile, you cannot send people there at the moment. But unlike almost everybody else, we got to send Nikki and Andy Smith to Thailand in mid-August. And it's a miracle of God the way that all happened, that they're now there in quarantine, getting ready to start their ministry at Christchurch, Bangkok. We're also right in the middle of trying to appoint somebody and get them over to The Hague. And again, this is suddenly difficult when travel corridors close down on you. For us as an agency, as I speak, we're about 30% down on our income because churches gathering, people coming across us, resort mission happening, uh, generates income that helps us keep going. And that's a real concern, I'm sure Chris will have spoken about it as well. What we realized is in the midst of all this that was going on, what mattered was it, we needed prayer. So we made sure that we we're producing prayer videos and Alice, you just recently did your first one. There'll be more of those. And also we needed to over communicate so people knew what was going on. When this all happened, when coronavirus and March the 18th and everything suddenly happened, all the staff started working from home. And it's a credit to them that they adapted, they were able to work almost at the same capacity. And although there was frustration with networks and printers and all that, we kept going. So it's a great credit to Andrew, Jacqueline, Jeanette, Jim, Maggie, Yelena, Jemima, who's now left, but you, Alice, in your role now, that while other agencies had to furlough staff, we were not in that position. We were able to keep the work going. And it's been really important at this point to do that. Lastly, I want to say, if I may, Alice, without taking all yeah. your time, um, over my holiday, I was mulling over, what's ICS for? Why do we exist? I think what we are called to, what we are good at, is we are made to plant and support international ministry. We are made to recruit and then place Anglican clergy from all over the world into various locations, be that in permanent chaplaincies or resort mission. And that's what we're good at. That's part of our DNA. And as we move forward post-corona, 
I feel that's our calling to carry on in that side of our ministry. I think that's enough of me, Alice. <laughs> it's, uh, I can talk forever about these things. That's great. Thank you so much, Richard. And thank you, Jim, for sharing as well. Um, don't forget to check out all the ICS social media things just to keep so that you're up to date on what we're getting up to. And thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.